Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we're going to do a sketchbook tour, so stick around. I bought this Holbein watercolor sketchbook and filled it up. Um, I did start this last year, so this is the longest I've ever taken, I think, to fill a sketchbook, and it's very full, <laughs> as you can see. Um, it is a funny little sketchbook. I've never seen one like this. I found it in Santa Fe when I was there with my husband at the same art store, it's called Artisan, that our friend Georgia O'Keefe, our collective artiste friend <laughs> Georgia O'Keefe used to shop at, um, and she has actually a, um, a whole museum down there. This sticker you might have seen at the end of one of my hauls. It was a gift from my friend Junko, who has a channel here. I did get this in the portrait shape as well. And this is what it looks like when you actually get it from the store. It's in this little plastic wrap and it's super thin like that. So I thought that was really interesting to just so you show you what it looked like brand new. Uh, so you can see what it looks like now that it is full. It is hard to tie that ribbon now that it's such a little chubby fat sketchbook. <laughs> so I started with this adorable little Highland calf. I really loved this first page. I thought it was super cute. Um, one of the things that I tried to do in this sketchbook was use a lot of watercolor because the paper is just so pretty with watercolor. It's very textured. It's cold pressed and it really held up well. Obviously it wrinkled and you can kind of see that on the back side on the left there. Um, but that's fine. I just did always on the right side. So this was a kind of a plein air style. I took this picture when I was in Santa Fe, but then I did the actual painting when I got home. I know that's something that my wonderful friend Sketches and Scrubs does a ton. She'll take beautiful pictures like when she went to Venice and then comes home and paints them. And I thought that was really cool. And I, of course, like to do that too. Um, but I'm not a huge landscape person. I'm more of a cute animal person. So we're back to the cute animals already here. <laughs> this is a mix of my favorite super granulating watercolors for the background. I did use some super granulating watercolors on this little baby owl as well but mostly all of the watercolor you're going to see in here, it's largely focused on Regina's watercolors because I was doing a use it up challenge and I'll get into that more later. Um, I actually will give you a close up of how far along I am in that watercolor palette. But one of the things I was trying to do in this sketchbook was really stretch, especially early on. I love how this water came out. I know you might think it's a street because that looks like a sidewalk, but it's actually water. Um, and I just thought it was really fun, all these colorful houses. Most of my reference pictures are either taken by myself or they're from Pexels or Pixabay. I'm obsessed with this one. This is one of my favorite things I've ever made, let alone made in a sketchbook uh, just for this sketchbook. I just love this turtle, you know, balancing a little bubble on its nose. I loved the texture. I loved how the background came out. And I just really can't believe this whole thing was with Regina's watercolors because they are transparent and they don't have any texture to them at all. And this looks super textured. And that's one of my favorite things. That's why I love super granulating watercolors. So it was really fun. This one is all super granulating watercolors. This was featured in a video. This and the next few pages are actually featured in a video about how to use super granulating watercolors, how to paint with them, and how to paint with ink. So that's coming up in this sketchbook. But I just love the texture that you get on cold press paper when you use granulation. So it's just really cool. And remember, you don't have to buy a whole palette of super granulating watercolors. You can just get a nice PBK 11, is it, that has granulation, like a black, a granulating black, and mix it with all your bright colors and you'll get a beautiful range of granulating watercolors. There are a lot of people who have done videos on that, including Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, Miranda Watson at Alkali Creek Art, and Sketches and Scrubs. So those are just three. I'm sure there are a ton of people who've done it, but go check those out. This one right here, speaking of sketches, this was done on a live stream that she and I did together for her channel. And basically I took a reference picture on one of my hikes in Colorado and I ran it through a really cool filter on Canva and made a new reference photo for us that was a little bit, you know, 
I don't know how to put it, like fantasy a little bit. That's kind of what this strikes me as, like a Candyland type thing. I love how this came out. It was so much fun to make. And then we just wanted to keep chatting, so we kept going, and I made this little super granulating owl just from my imagination, no reference. She was so funny because she was like, I cannot imagine how you made an animal from no reference. And I'm like, um, excuse me, are you not the queen of florals with no reference whatsoever? Like, I could never make a floral even with a reference. I stink at making botanicals. So I just found that really funny how we're all just really different and what our specialties are. I loved how this background came out. That glacier blue is so stunning. So I really like this little guy. He's so adorable. Because I am going to show you the Regina's watercolors palette later, I thought I'd show you my super granulating palette here too. I love this thing. It is featured in so many videos and that's what I used for the background. That's just what the swatch looks like against the background. And there's my beautiful palette. I love it so much. You can definitely find videos just on this palette on this channel if you want to see more detail about what's in there. And let's move on to the next sketch. This one is just with ink. I had just gotten my inks and I was just playing around with them. And this one is actually what gave me the idea. I'm just showing you an example of an ink bottle, what I'm talking about. Um, this one's almost used up. I'm trying to show you. I don't think you can tell, but it's almost done. It's a Colorverse Rocky Blue and I use it all the time in my Le bon Rosa Lilac pen. But this one really made me want to show you how to play with inks in your sketchbook because I love how that sky came out and that was just by doing a wash with Sailor Studio. I believe it was 224, I think. Um, we're going to see some swatches on another page and, and it's right there and you'll be able to see which one it is if I'm misspeaking right now. But I love how it came out. I loved the water and the mountains and the sky, especially because I think that green peeking through really is reminiscent of a uh, Northern Lights. This is one of my favorite things in the sketchbook too. I made this whole little whale with a sparkle ink from Diatrementis, the name of it's written there. And I'll just give you a close up of the rose gold sparkle that is in this blue ink. The only really sad thing about this ink is it's only for painting. You can put it in a pen, but it'll clog your pen up like pretty bad. <laughs> so it's supposed to be made for fountain pens, but I've found that it's really made for painting and it's kind of no good for fountain pens. <laughs> so just use with caution, but look how gorgeous it is. And it's so much fun to paint with these detrimentous sparkle inks or shimmer inks. On this page, it's another example that I used for that same video about how to paint with super granulating watercolors and inks. And this one is just a couple of cacti. I was inspired by the Noodler's Cactus Fruit Eel, which is the pink color on this page, and decided to just do a couple of cactuses, cacti. Um, one with the noodlers. It's actually called Turquoise of the Mesas now instead of Navajo Turquoise. Um, and then this one is made with my Sailor Studios ink. And I just think they're so pretty. And look how vibrant that turquoise is. It's so, 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 so pretty. You got to be a little careful with noodlers inks because they can smear if you use them uh, too concentrated, but you can always water them down with distilled water in your pen, or you can just paint with them like this. This is a lot of noodlers, um, the turquoise here and a bunch of other different inks I put. I think it's the same three inks um, that I used in here. And you can see the cactus fruit eel is sort of the detail there. I was just playing around super abstract. I just love watching ink flow in water and it's very therapeutic to me. I almost don't care what it looks like in the end when I'm playing with ink. And I love how it looked on this cold pressed watercolor paper. I thought it was so cool. This is another example of just sort of not caring what the outcome looks like. I don't love how this came out, but I really loved making it. It was just so relaxing and fun to paint. No reference from my brain. I live in Colorado and so I just had mountains on the mind and I love how the colors look. Now this one is much more my style. It is a sort of a finished piece and it is a little baby fluffy owl and I just think it's so adorable. And I used that Diatrementis ink in the background again. It's just a different color. This one is called Halogen Green Copper and the copper is very smudgy. You can kind of see how much I used it smudged all over the bottom there. And who cares? It's my sketchbook. I don't care at all. I just love how it looks. It looks so cool to me. And I love painting with that ink. Like I just love painting with Diatrementis inks, especially for backgrounds like that, because you can just watch it flow in the water and have so much fun. So I hope you like that one too. This is one of my favorites in this sketchbook as well. 
Now, this is not one of my favorites. <laughs> If you see this, I mean, I love the background. The background is J. Hilbon Emerald de Chavour, which I got in a sample because it's super expensive and I didn't want to do a whole bottle unless I really loved the sample. As you can, that whole background is that one ink. So every color you see in the background, the red sheen, the gold shimmer, and the turquoise like light blue, that's all one ink. It's just in different concentrations. So it's really fun to paint with inks because you can get those backgrounds. Same thing with that prior one with the green. Um, and I do love Emerald de Chavour, but it's not something I need a bottle of. And a lot of people might think that's sacrilege, but I said what I said. <laughs> Um, this one is a really fun example. I used, I believe I did use granulating watercolors in the background for this. I just love them and I couldn't resist. But this idea is in a book and I can't remember what it's called. It's like 365 days of watercolor or something like a watercolor thing every day. I think that's what it's from. I got a bunch of art books from the library and this was from one of them. I don't think it was a hammerhead. That part was my idea, but the overall concept of looking up at a shark with a bunch of fish with the light source right behind the shark is definitely from that book and it was really fun to do that. This is Queen Herbie. She is a rapper and I love her original music. She's really cool, but I just largely think her face is stunning and interesting and I really, really wanted to paint it. So this is from her music video BDE, <laughs> which is a very funny video, but definitely not for kids. So be forewarned. She's got a great voice. She has a great brain for coming up with lyrics and I think she's just the coolest. So that is my Queen Herbie painting and I think she looks beautiful here. I do think you can tell it's her, which I'm very excited about because portraits are not my thing. My thing is cute animal art and here we go with like an ultimate cute animal art piece in this sketchbook. These are the neon watercolor from Paul Rubens that they sent to me to try and look how stinking neon it is. I mean it is really really neon. I had something sent to me a while ago from Grabby that were metallic watercolors and they didn't stay metallic even in my sketchbook. So it's good to see that the Paul Rubens neon are staying neon. Like this looks like I just painted it yesterday. I'm very excited about it, very happy with it. And there is a review on the channel of those paints if you want to see more. Um, they were really, really fun to use. Okay, I love this one. I know that I literally just said that I stink at botanicals. This is such a rare exception of actually making flowers that I like looking at. And it's not even the flowers, it's more the background. And this is the one I wanted to talk about Regina's watercolors with because the texture I got with this using just crystal clear, uh, transparent, you know what I mean? Like smooth watercolors. I couldn't believe that with a Schmidt like, you know, M gram like watercolor, I was able to get these effects. So I was very impressed. The sort of texture on the top right there, that's from dabbing a tissue over it when it was still wet. So I did use that. I didn't use any salt. It was just all about intentional backgrounds, like by dropping water into this. And here are my Regina's watercolors. This it's very reflective. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but it is a glass mixing palette on the top there, the white part. And then these are all metal quarter pans, square quarter pans. You, they do come up, but because I use them so much, that's actually not a Regina's watercolor. I just stuck that in because there was room. Um, these are her watercolors. They come in these metal square quarter pans. There are other shapes, but these are the ones I liked for this um, little palette and I just think this range of colors is really great. I love them. I can't believe how much pan you can see. I mean I really am making good progress on using them up. This was part of my use it up challenge and I wanted to try to use an entire watercolor palette because I have so many watercolor palettes. I wanted to see how long it would take me to use one up. I've been exclusively using this one since I started that challenge with only supplementing with other watercolors that are like totally different. And this is another Regina's watercolor only little <laughs> guinea pig that I thought was so sweet just from my imagination. Love it. Again, using controlled backgrounds. Uh, but it's taking forever to use it up because watercolor really does last so, so long. So I think I'm going to put that challenge aside. The challenge was to use up my Turner acryl gouache, which I did, my flash paint, which I did, and my Regina's watercolors, which I can't. Like they are just 
as much progress as I'm making in them and I do feel really accomplished, it will take so long to finish them. And I miss some of my other, other watercolors. Like I like to mix it up. I like to use other materials. So I'm not going to use it as a challenge anymore. I'm just going to keep enjoying them. And yes, adorable. I love this owl. This is another one just from my head and I really like how it came out. I love the texture on the wing here and in the face. I think this guy's very cute. I don't, tell me how you think or what you think, sorry, about this guy in the comments. Um, but yeah, I mean, Miranda Watson over at Alkali Creek Art is also doing a use it up challenge, I believe of her Hemi watercolors. And she still uses a bunch of other materials. So I think I'm just going to be mixing, the, mixing it up and not trying to force myself to just use one palette anymore. I just love my paints and all my art supplies too much, far too much, to leave them abandoned and gathering dust while I try to finish an entire watercolor palette. Regina's watercolors are fabulous. Highly recommend. Not sponsored. But yeah, I'm going to start mixing it up a little bit. This is another one with exclusively her watercolors. I think this came out so fun and cool. Another one just from my imagination. There are a lot in here that are just from my imagination. I put those little birds in the corner just for scale. But I'm really excited about being able to just paint without reference in a sketchbook and not care if it comes out perfect. This one doesn't have a great range of values. This one does. This is another one that was just kind of from my imagination. And I did a technique where you just lay down color across the whole thing. And I'm actually noticing here that I want to put a little white dot in the eye. So bear with me. But uh, <laughs> I guess now my sketchbook is finished. Um, but I really like laying color down on the entire page and then doing the negative watercolor technique where you make the around the thing you're painting darker. And then, of course, I made the water bubbles coming out of this little blowfish's mouth darker as well. I love how this came out. This will probably be the thumbnail that you saw to click on. I just think the colors are so much fun and I loved it so much that I did a similar thing here. I just did the whole background with pinks and purples and then painted over top this little baby owl just from my imagination. Another one just from my imagination with a really pretty, um, I don't, what do you call the bow that it's on like a tree bow and I love how the shadow under the bird came out how fuzzy it looks I really love it so I hope that you enjoyed this one too this is the last one I actually painted although it's not the last painting in this sketchbook I just did it out of order I'd seen a Natasha Newton painting in my Instagram feed and this doesn't look like that painting but it does remind me of Natasha Newton so just know it's like Natasha Newton inspired although it is from my imagination. This is that ink swatch page that I was talking about on the top left uh, 224 so it looks like it was studio 224 that I did that sky with and I just love it so much. You can pause and just read any of these that you want to see. It's a mix of inks and super granulating watercolors on this page because that was the topic of that video. I just think they're so cool. Like I just love ink. I love super granulating, super granulating watercolors. They are so much fun. This little froggy is another one that I did with a mix of watercolor and that Heliogen green copper ink from Deatramentis with all the flakes. And it does smear the, the copper parts do smear if you use it in that con concentration. So just be aware of that if you're trying to be super precise. I was not, I just wanted to be cute. And I thought this frog was so grumpy and hilarious and really enjoyed that reference photo on Pexels. So I decided to go to town and had a lot of fun making that one. <laughs> it's so cute. Finally, this was actually the first page I filled in this sketchbook. I filled it on my trip to Santa Fe. If you watch my Santa Fe vlog, you will see it there. And I think these, again, ink moving in water is so much fun. But these Daniel Smith watercolors that I have in a little travel palette that I bring with me, they are so, so, so pretty. On the very last part of this, and actually it's good for you to see that it didn't bleed through. I did super heavily concentrated, like kind of side portrait ink swatches. <laughs> Let me know if you saw the portraits on that. But I'm just giving you a close up because yeah, those watercolors are so pretty. That's all my eye is going to. I just think this palette is so stunning. And that green, that cascade green sort of in the middle and the cobalt teal, they really are so eye catching. So this sketchbook was super fun for me to fill. I hope it was fun for you to watch. Please go ahead and like the video if you enjoyed it. Check if you're subscribed. And if you're not, I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe. It really helps the channel. Until next time, remember, create something cute.